This is part two of our Van Gogh inspired masterpiece. We're gonna add paint today. So again, here is the example that I provided. Um, I'm gonna start down here in the village area. You should have paint. You definitely need your water. You may have a sponge. Um, we are just putting little dots, little dots of colors and mixing them together, you are just layering them on top of each other. I'll show you what I mean. Your paint palette may look different than mine, but I'm gonna take some green and I'm just doing little marks. I'm gonna take some yellow and come back and do some more little marks. When I do this style of painting, I like to work in one area at a time. It's kind of overwhelming when I have this whole area that I know I need to do. So I just kind of work in like one little section at a time, making my little marks. There's no right or wrong, you're the artist. I'm a person that likes a lot of color. So you can see, I'm gonna use all these colors. You use whatever is provided for you and whatever you like. I'm just laying color on top of color on top of color. Sometimes it mixes in with the one before and you'll see a new shade form. That's fine. So again, I don't do everything at one time. I just work in different sections. If you wanted to, you can like do all your blue marks and then go back and do all your green marks and then go back and do all your pink marks. I just get bored with the color sometimes and then just switch. It also creates new colors when you do that. Can you see that? All right, so we're gonna do that all the way across the bottom. I have finished my bottom and here's what it looks like. Your goal is just to try to cover up what's there on the construction paper. So yes, the construction paper is black and yes, it's gonna show through some areas, but you're putting your dots so close together that not much is showing through. Don't forget this area right here. If you have room, on the other side of your tree, you wanna fill in that part too. We are gonna continue with our Vincent Van Gogh inspired artwork. Um, so we painted the bottom with all our different colors, just layering, 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 and layering. Now we're gonna to get to the top. So again, this is kind of what we're going for. I have laminated it since you last saw it, so it's a little shiny. Um, I'm gonna start with my swirls first. Take whatever color you want to. Remember, you are the artist. Wash my brush out. Um, okay. And again, you're just putting little marks. However you want to. You don't have to use the same color. You could use different colors. I'm just going right on top of the chalk from, or the uh, old pastel, I guess. Do whatever you want to. I have my magenta, and I'm dabbing a little bit of a lighter color into it. So it's just not one solid color. Just trying to follow that same line that we did that was a swirl. And I continue this all the way on my swirl in the sky. I have finished the swirl in the sky. I'm going to wash out my brush. I'm gonna go for the moon and the stars this time. So you can use yellow and white, you can use orange if you want to. And again, you're just putting just some marks around those objects. Just little bitty marks. So what's different about the sky 
if you have noticed on mine, is I'm leaving more of the black paper showing. So the dots are, or the marks are a little further apart. They don't have to be as on top of each other as down here. That's what I'm doing for mine. So this is just kind of like the glow. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that same paint right on top of my old pastel. I'm not making it like a flower. I'm putting dashes around it. So the dashes are not coming from the dot. They're going around the dot. Again, that's your stars in the sky. I'm gonna take some of that same color and just add a little bit in my mountains. I kind of like when the paint is down here too on top of the oil pastel. I think it gives it a neat look. I'm going to do a little shading. Not coloring the whole mountain that color, just putting a little bit in there. Pick whatever color you want to. I'm also going to take some of my green, put a little of that in this area. And some of my yellow, and I'm going to make stripes. This just adds dimension, adds some texture to our cypress tree. Add some highlights. I think I might add some of that bright yellow in this area too, just like some, just some highlights. Don't forget if you have space on the other side of your tree. So now I'm gonna go for the sky. So your night sky. Remember this is a night sky, starry night. I'm gonna use blues. I'm gonna kind of experiment with the colors on my palette. Again, you're just doing those little dashes. Um, you're leaving some of the black showing this time because remember your sky's dark, so that black will help you. And then you don't have to put as many either. I have two different blues on my palette. You use what you have. Again, so you don't feel so overwhelmed to cover the whole sky. Work in a third at a time. So one third, one third, one third. And I'm gonna dip in my light blue, my medium blue, I guess, and my dark blue at the same time. I'm just gonna start here. Just start putting my little dashes. So unlike the part at the bottom, you kind of are doing it in a line as you go. You're not going here and there and everywhere. You're trying to keep it in a pattern form. In a line. Now what do you do if that's in the way? Well, this is where you can start making your lines curve. There's no right or wrong. Again, you can curve it around the star. Let me go ahead and do that to all my stars. Curve it around. You're just going to fill your night sky with all these little dashes. So 
Some of my dashes are bigger, some are smaller, doesn't really matter. But again, I am leaving some of the black showing. You don't want to forget down here inside your swirls. So with the help of TV magic, I have, I have fast forwarded some and you can see. Now if you get to this point and you say, well, you know what? I really want to add more dots. I don't like all that paper showing. You can go back to areas that you want to put more dots and just do it right on top, okay? Not a big deal. After I've got all my paint on there, my next step, I like to go back and outline things in black. So I'm just gonna put a black line here. I have gotten the black from the oil pastels. Maybe. Try again. Maybe. Oh, there we go. That one didn't want to work for me for some reason. I just, this is just me as an artist. I love to outline things in black. I like the technique in that it just makes things stand out more. You can see I wasn't exact on the lines there. Not a problem. Doesn't matter. Right, I'm going to outline my cypress tree. I'm going to be careful around the paint because my paint is still wet up there. All right, I'm not going to forget about this area over here. I think I might go and put some more texture lines in my cypress tree. The last step for this piece of artwork, you're gonna take the paper that I gave you that has the paint on it. Um, you're gonna cut out little houses. So again, the example has these down here. And all I did was just cut out house shapes and glue them on and then outline them. So I just take the scraps I gave you. These are just scraps from a previous project. All right, so there's a the house roof this can be the bottom of that I'm gonna glue it on now I don't want that showing like that so I'm gonna cut let me show you how I'm cutting if I cut the corner up like that it will hide it behind the roof and then when I glue it down that's the last step um, if you want to go back and outline your little houses again, like I told you, I like to outline stuff. You can do that. Put as many or as few as you want, and your Van Gogh masterpiece is 